Hello folks, I have with me today Chirag, who is the Office Principal of ThoughtWorks and Kazi, who is a BA with ThoughtWorks. Hi Chirag. Hi. Okay. Uh, can you tell us something about ThoughtWorks and uh, how it, the presence in India and your global operations? Sure. So ThoughtWorks is a, is a global software development company. We provide uh, software development services, uh, we build uh, software products as well as uh, we provide software consulting. Um, uh, two organizations globally. In India, we are based in five cities. Um, we are based in Bangalore, Pune, Chennai, Hyderabad, and Gurgaon. Um, we are around thousand people, slightly more than thousand people across India. Uh, in in ThoughtWorks, uh, globally we are we are around three thousand five hundred people. And uh, uh, what else would you like to know? Uh, what kind of an activity does uh, ThoughtWorks do? What are your products? And some brief about uh, the softwares that you deliver. Sure. So we uh, we work across industries and across technology. So for example, we work for banks, we work for other kind of financial institutions like uh, insurance companies, etc. We also work for airlines, we, we work for retailers, uh, we, we work for a lot of retailers. We also work for uh, some social uh, organizations like UNICEF, uh, we work for uh, rural healthcare uh, providers. Uh, so there's a whole uh, diversity of, uh, of uh, domains that we, that we operate in. And uh, for, for these people, we build, uh, we build software um, that, that then helps them create a differentiator for their market uh, that creates a competitive edge for them. Uh, and that software, we, we use multiple technologies uh, to, to deliver depending on the context. We, we work with, uh, with Java and .NET quite a bit. We also work with Ruby, we work with Python, we work with uh, other new JVM languages like Scala and Clojure as well. Uh, we work on Golang. You know, there's, a, there's a whole uh, uh, breadth of uh, programming languages that we use. We also work across uh, other type of uh, uh, spread of technology. So, for example, we work, uh, we build uh, large scale web applications. We build, um, we build uh, core core systems, you know, mid middleware type of systems. We we work on big data projects for our company, for for our clients. We work on uh, we work on Internet of Thing type of uh, type of. Uh, applications as well we work on building mobile apps we build uh, apps for you know we've built some apps for uh, for uh, smart watches and stuff like that so there's a whole spread uh, there how does thought work promote innovation and creativity so can you share some insights about that specific to the indian office right so in Pune. yeah so one of our goals uh, globally is uh, is that we want to revolutionize software industry Mm -hmm. And and we think we would do that over over a long period of time by creating a community of passionate uh, uh, you know people who would come together. So so of course there are there are programmers in ThoughtWorks who are passionate about who care about their craft and who want to constantly learn new things and and figure out how to build great software. Uh, there are also programmers outside ThoughtWorks who, who are across the same journey. So we want to get everybody, get all of them together so that we can learn from them and, and hopefully they can learn something from us. So that's one of the things that we want to do. The other thing we want to do is also uh, get together other, uh, other like-minded people uh, from outside the IT industry. So for example, what if we became a community, we created a community that had programmers, scientists, uh, social activists, artists, students, all of these uh, different kinds of people came together from time to time to co-create something. And that's our long-term mission that, you know, that we will build a very vibrant community where, where very fun, interesting things can happen. And, uh, and so for that, we do, uh, we, we often organize um, events of different kinds, whether it's, uh, whether it's workshops where, where a thought worker or two we teach uh, teach people some new technology that we've we've learned and become good at, or um, or organize conferences where where a bunch of people come together and share their learnings, uh, or hackathons where people come together and learn by doing. Uh, a lot of these type of events happen at our offices. So in Pune, 
I I think almost every weekend, if you if you pop in in in, in at any of our weekends, you'll you'll figure out um, that there's some or the other event happening. Just today, there are two events that are happening in parallel. So while while there's one event which is the uh, React uh, Hackathon for for students uh, for for children in schools and colleges. There's also another event that is happening where uh, some senior uh, developers are learning about a new thing in infrastructure management called Docker. So that sort of thing is always happening. And we are very, very proud to become a platform for that. So uh, can we get some more insights about the React Hackathon that's happening over here? Who are the participants in, in, in this program? Uh, sure. So first of all, uh, let me try to correct. The event is actually named as Hack Reaction. Okay. And it's uh, one of its kind and uh, the only event that I have heard of which is directed towards students. And the biggest uh, plus point to this is that it is also organized by students. So imagine a bunch of kids coming together uh, from 12th grade saying that, oh, let's, let us you know try to uh, get all of our fellow students together uh, in a hackathon where we come together uh, spend two days uh, working on something uh, which is which which gets us to a working solution and this needs to be inno innovative this needs to be different than what we already have available obviously with their exposure and everything they might not know whether certain things are available or not but just the initiative of uh, getting those raw minds uh, coming together and working uh, to build something working in these two days in a, form, in a hackathon format is like really good uh, this is uh, basically from an initiative from 12 standard students uh, for students between 9 to 12 standard which is like really amazing to me so uh, today we have uh, we have 100 of these students who've, who've turned up and since since the morning they've been forming small groups and and coding together uh, one thing that i found really interesting was that 30 of them are 9 standard students mm -hmm. so you know just so that a uh, 9 standard is uh, they are age 14 Right, so students at age fourteen have uh, have been uh, working on, you know, figuring out what new ideas can they uh, can they create, and and then actually program for as well, which is quite quite nice. Yeah. So, uh, does this indicate that uh, the younger generations of Pune has a very high passion for programming? It it really does seem like that, and I'm 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 surprised uh, as to how how uh, connected these these students are how well they know about uh, about tech how much they know about technology uh, if you if i i was talking to a couple of people and 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 i'm not exaggerating if you if you didn't look at them if, if they weren't you know in front of you and it was like a voice over phone or something you uh, the from the content and confidence with which they were talking about technology you would be you would be easily fooled if they were students or experienced professionals. You know, it's just because you can you can look at them and you know that they are fifteen year olds. Uh, you can tell otherwise from how they were talking about it and how they were working on on software. You would easily be uh, easily mistake them from uh, for for being experienced professionals. And I think that's good to know that Pune has such a large number of IT talent. Yeah. Uh, what kind of technologies uh, these students are using and what kind of uh, development activity are they doing? So they're working on different technologies. Uh, the most famous that I've found is uh, basically Java. However, a lot of them, because they use a lot of applications, they are also interested to make something which runs on a mobile, uh, in a mobile application. Uh, the kind of work that they are doing is uh, they have been given quite open uh, they are not given any specific problem to solve so they are thinking in various different directions one of the example uh, is just about just thinking about how the operating systems work on uh, on our machines today uh, the other example that i learned was uh, people were trying to build something for uh, visually disabled people so they wanted to create a camera link it with their cell phone and uh, the camera basically helps them out uh, to figure out if there is an obstacle uh, ahead or if there is a road ahead, all of those things. So it's really, I, I was actually blown away with the yeah. amount of creative thinking and the ideas they were coming up with. Somebody else was building a, a music jukebox. Uh, there was another uh, team who was building a mobile application to track expenses. Just 
again, there's a huge uh, diversity of different kinds of ideas and interests that these uh, students come from. Somebody else was saying, you know, we want to build something that helps uh, schools uh, share messages with each of the class in a much better way. So instead of having a generic PA system where everyone gets disturbed, uh, even if the message is meant for one class, uh, can we build something that allows uh, teachers to easily address one class uh, from a PA system? So we can imagine that the I I think it's I think it's neat that they are looking at problems that they are seeing on a daily basis, uh, and and they are hearing about just generally on the internet because of course you know, they, they they know more about what's happening around the world than than us uh, many a times. They're taking ideas from there, connecting it with, with what they know about uh, technology and, and converting them into potential ideas that they can play with. Yeah, well, what really interested me was, uh, I think in general, all of us, like, like human beings, uh, we should think in a perspective of what skills we have and how we can use it for the betterment of uh, humanity in general and the society in general. And few of the ideas that came uh, from them, right, like, you know, helping uh, blind people, visually disabled people, or helping schools. So they saw these problems and they knew that, okay, we are learning about some skills which can help us solve this problem, yeah. which is like one of the biggest points that has come up yeah. uh, here. Because technology for technology's sake will only take you so far, you know, in, but when, when you can marry it with other goals, uh, of, of helping people around you or becoming more productive yourself etc is when it creates that next level of passion which will then you know hopefully keep some of these students going for the next 10-20 uh, years in a, in a programming uh, oriented career. I definitely see that the kind of uh, kids the passion that they have and they are already arriving at call to action where they are linking their passion with the daily problems and uh, proposing solutions. So that's definitely a very interesting development. Yeah. And I think that that has a great future for the IT professionals for the city. Yeah, now, absolutely. do you have any programs to identify some up and coming talent or budding talent from the school and then nurturing them to take them to the next levels? Yeah, so uh, we are uh, we are very intuitive about it and, and we are very uh, uh, opportunistic about, about it in, in the sense that uh, that I don't have a two-year plan or five-year plan with which you know some of this some of the people we are interacting with uh, will so so I don't have a sort of very clearly laid out plan like that the plan is simple that they coming together they know now where the office is uh, a bunch of thought workers who have come to this event there are 10 20 of, of us who will interact with them over the next uh, couple of days so, so so I'm hoping that those connections will get formed and uh, and 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 so hopefully uh, these uh, uh, the, the the students who've come here today will take opportunities to come keep coming back here for other events over a period of time and uh, and keep talking to to other uh, professionals whether it's thought workers or, or others and form you know synergis uh, synergic uh, uh, symbiotic relationships where you know, somebody becomes a mentor, somebody challenges them, somebody sort of helps them, uh, somebody enrolls them for some open source project, somebody, uh, 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 somebody uh, you know, helps them with their, with their uh, school work at some point. All of those things can happen and, and will happen if we just um, stay focused on creating a platform and, and getting communities together. So that's what we are doing. It'll, it'll, it'll all work out in some way in, in, in the next two to five years. Well, I think that's a great plan. And uh, we definitely wish you all the best for this great kind of work that you're doing. So thanks, Chirag. And thanks, Kazi, for being here with us today. Thank, Thank you. you.